This video is sponsored by Zolve. I'll talk about them in just a minute. These are the six things which you should not do before coming to United States. Let's get started. What's up everyone, welcome to another video. So first of all, I just wanna say congratulations, you have made it. Uh, it's a long journey to finding a university, finding a major, getting an admit, getting a US visa, and now you are almost there. You're planning to come to United States, you are probably have your travels booked, et cetera, et cetera, and now you're watching like, hey, what is this video? I should probably watch it. Why is he saying like, these are the six things you should not do before coming to United States. I hope uh, that you learn something. Please give me your 10, 15 minutes of your attention and I promise you that you will definitely learn something out of it. Here's the number one thing. You should not wait to reach out to your seniors. Your seniors are the most crucial part of your MS master's journey or bachelor's journey. Here's why. They have gone through the entire journey before you have come to United States. They have already walked the path now you're going to start walking that path. They already know how to reach out to professors, they know the campus jobs, they know how to get internships, they know the area really well, they know all the hacks and trips and tricks which happens when you go to United States. They have already done all of this. So you don't have to learn on your own, you have a senior who can help you. But what I've seen a lot of people do is they don't reach out to them until they are in United States and then they start building that relationship. I highly recommend you that if you have made that decision, if you have already made your travel plans, start looking up the seniors, uh, start contacting them, start building that relationship. I would go even a step beyond. The day you land, ask the seniors you've been talking to, ask them like, hey, can we meet for coffee? Can I come? Can we hang out? Can you show me the campus? Those are the ways you can start building that relationship because it's very, 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 very important that you start building that relationship. Don't have this selfish motive. Obviously give something to them. Don't have this like, oh, this person is gonna like really help me get a job like don't become like super desperate but really is like try to know them and try to like get answers from them ask good questions uh, really show that like a learner's like a student attitude that you really want to learn from that i hope you will not wait before you land in united states and you will reach out to your seniors number two is don't get forex cards i know it's kind of uh, sensational <laughs> a lot of people get forex cards and forex cards are great but uh, until now there are like a lot of other options which are available forex cards have a lot of charges you pay transactional fees you pay withdrawal fees you pay deposit foreign transaction now lots of uh, hidden fees and there are options which is what where zol comes in and that's why i love to partner with them i've done several videos with them in the past Go check it out, link in the description. But Zolve is amazing because if you have not heard of it, they help you open a US bank account with sitting in India before even coming to United States. Uh, you just have to provide your documents and you will have your US bank account ready open for you. Number two, you get US credit card, which is huge up to $5,000 limit. Trust me, people who come to United States as a student, they don't have any credit history and they don't even get the credit card worth $300. In this case, you might actually get up to $5,000 which is massive. And why is it important to have credit card or even build that credit history? Because the day you land, you can start swiping your credit card and start building that credit history. And guess what? Because of that, your credit score is growing. And now, let's say after five months, you wanna buy a MacBook, which is $5,000, but you don't wanna have $5,000 and wanna buy it on EMI or on a loan. Your credit history is good because you have started building it. You want to buy a car at some point and your credit history is solid because you have a very long credit history from the day one you have landed. When you have Forex card, you will not be able to build that credit history. There are so many other benefits. I would highly recommend you link in the description. If you use my link, please do use my link. That's how you support the channel. You will get $10 referral bonus as well. So make sure to use my link for link in the description this also brings me to the point number three is don't activate international calling on your existing or indian sim card here's why uh, a lot of people say that hey i mean you know it's good to get uh, that international calling activated etc but if you get zolve they actually give you one free month your first free month u.s 
SIM card which you can use it as soon as you arrive in United States or land in United States which is awesome because you don't have to worry about it you can start calling you can book Uber you can call your seniors you can call anybody and you have the US pay SIM card first month is free which is awesome again link in the description highly recommended number four is you should not wait on looking up your coursework and professors this is very important a lot of time people think that oh it's okay i'll go i'll relax it's a honeymoon period everything is sorted i'll go there and then figure it out the reason one of the reason i love thing about doing masters in united states is like going to a restaurant when you go to a restaurant you get menu you decide what meal do you want to eat what starters you want what main course do you want what dessert do you want do you want any appetizers drinks etc you get to design your master's course you get to choose what courses you want what professors you want to choose do you want the first semester to be super hard do you want the last semester to be very light because you're going to be doing full-time job search all this you can figure it out sitting in india again how by contacting your seniors and at least understanding what are the different subjects in the first semester what are you going to learn how are you going to plan it how that first semester's courses are going to help you get the projects which you want to do that will help you get internship figure this out before coming to united states don't wait to land in United States. A couple hours a day of research, this is gonna take you a long way. And the point I also added is that research on your professors. Now, here's the catch. I should actually add this as a fifth point, so make it like seven things you should not do, is like don't wait to reach out to the professors. Once you figure out the coursework you want to take, start reaching out to the professors. I've made a video with Akriti and several other students who reached out to professors when they were in India, sitting in India before even coming to United States. They reached out to them, they said, hi, hello, hey, I'm looking for, you know, TA job or etc. I've actually have a template on my website. Uh, check it out, link in the description. But make sure that you reach out to your professors. And what happened with Akriti, she got the TA job sitting in India before even coming to United States. And because of that, she got entire master's tuition fee waived off. And every semester she got like 9,000 or something type in. So basically she did the master's for free and made more money and started savings and investing that money. You should go actually watch that podcast. There are several other podcasts like that, but that's why don't wait to reach out to the professors when you come to United States. I've seen this mistake a lot. I've done that mistake as well. So you don't do that mistake, sir. Like learn from your people and learn from the seniors. Like go ask them like, hey, is this professor, see who has the TA job and maybe ask them like, hey, if they are graduating, then that professor is probably looking for TA jobs. Then maybe that's the best way to start a conversation with your professors. Obviously, don't make your first conversation like that, but template, go check it out. Point number six is you should not wait to start researching and applying for on-campus job before coming to United States. This is another mistake I've seen and I've done it myself as well, that people wait until they land in United States and they think that, okay, once I'm there, then I'll do all this. But think about it. You are coming in fall semester or a spring semester. The staff, the campus, they need someone as soon as there's I don't know if you can hear us, but there's like police. Also, I'm by the way, I'm in Chicago. This is my hotel, so that's why it looks different. Let the siren go away and then I'll talk. Like I was saying, I've seen this, that people wait until they land in United States, uh, but do not do that. Why? Because think about it, when you come in spring semester or fall semester, everybody is on doing summer vacation, winter break, and as soon as the fall semester start, the campus needs to be functioning. And it is functioning because of all those student jobs or the campus jobs. So if you wait, all the jobs are pretty much taken. So you kind of don't get the nicer jobs and you get the leftover jobs. Obviously there are some transition happening and you will get some jobs that's why you hear a lot of time people say that I didn't get any job in the first semester because they waited too long so a lot of campuses will have on-campus job portal like handshake or something like that which is basically jobs which are posted by your university and then also other companies 
start looking up that job and see if any of your seniors, again, seniors, again, this is why your seniors are important. See if they are working in one of those departments, ask them like, hey, can you refer me? Seniors are key to this part. Uh, I even reaching out to seniors and asking them, hey, where do you work? Oh, do you work in that cafeteria? Can I get that job? You work on the desk job, can I get that? Uh, start researching it so that you feel prepared when you land in United States. And so that you're already dealing with homesickness, cultural shock, weather, all of this. You don't wanna deal with this overwhelming information. So you're like ready to be prepared. So don't wait to start looking up jobs on campus. Last but not least is seven. I said six in the beginning because I split the fifth one in two parts, but last but not least, you should not get cheap health insurance. I've made a separate video on this. You should go watch that video. Please don't get cheap health insurance. Why? Because I've seen so many times when students actually think that, oh, this is so expensive. My monthly payment is gonna be $100 per month. Oh my God, uh, it's like I can't afford it or whatever, whatever X, Y, Z reasons. Uh, yeah, your monthly payment might be $100 or $200 a month, but that four or $5,000 is not even going to matter once you start your full-time job, number one. Number two, that $200 per month of that insurance is going to cover probably $100,000 to $500,000 of medical expenses. So get a better insurance. If you're buying the insurance, which is like $200, $300 cheap, like silver plan or whatever, a lot of people go for that. I mean, I'm not saying don't do it, but don't be overconfident that I'm so healthy, I'm not gonna need it. You don't know accidents happen. I am telling you, there are so many students who have reached out to me because they went, met with an accident. They were riding bicycle, no fault of the student, but they got into accident, car accident, and now they were admitted in hospital and the car guy didn't have car insurance. They just hit and run case. And you know, you are now having $70,000, $80,000 of bill. What are you gonna do? Uh, you already have your $50,000, $60,000 of education loans. Now you are gonna have health expenses, medical loans. Yeah. Yeah, sure they're gonna let you like you know finance that but they're gonna charge you interest and all of that so why do you want it if you have a health insurance that's gonna be covered dental insurance plans uh, medical vision insurance plans i've made a separate video so don't get cheap insurance this is one thing you should not do definitely get a better insurance health insurance check that video out. So there you have it. Those are the seven things you should not do before coming to United States. In a way I said like there are, those are the seven things you should do before coming to United States. So make sure to check all those, read again. If you have any questions, please let me know. I might make the part two of this. Uh, I hope you learned something new in this video. If you have any feedback, please feel free to comment. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep smiling and keep hustling. You gotta hustle every single day. Zolve, link in the description. Use my link with my code, whatever. First link in the description. Please make sure to go check it out. I highly recommend it. I love them. That's why I partnered with them in a couple of videos. I'll see you guys in the next one.